This is section 8.4, and the ICANN statement for today is, I can find the percent of change. We've been finding the amount of change a whole bunch, but now we're going to find the percent of change. And another way to talk about this is the percent of increase or decrease. So similar to what we've done in the past, but a little bit of a twist to it. So first thing we're going to start off with is a little bit of vocabulary, make sure we're all aware of what we're talking about. So what does it mean when something in, is increasing? Well, if something is increasing, it's getting bigger. So we'll go ahead and write that. So getting bigger getting bigger, or it's going up. So let's write going up also. Well, by the same token, then decreasing would be the exact opposite. So we'll say getting smaller, getting smaller, uh, or going down. Okay, and we've dealt with some prices and things like that that go up or go down. Okay, and which would in, uh, indicate an increase? Would it be positive or negative? Well, when things go up, we normally think of that as a positive thing. So increasing would be positive. So that means decreasing would be indicated by a negative. And that's going to be really important as we go through and do the problems today. So finding the percent or decrease is very similar to like, like finding markup and discount problems, as we mentioned earlier. The main difference is we're always going to be finding a percent. So we'll write the word percent right here. And we're going to do a couple of problems here and see if we can spot some patterns with this. So the instructions here in bold, find how much the percent changes from 100% and state if it is an increase or decrease. The direction, whether it's getting bigger or smaller, increase or decrease, that's usually pretty easy. Um, it's figuring out what the percentage that it's, is that's going to be kind of difficult about this. So we always, as, as usual, we want to make sure that we round to the nearest hundredth. So the crack in the earthquake fault went from 5 inches to 8 inches. Now, what you're going to notice about these problems, because we're finding a percent, is we're going to be given two numbers, no percent. So on each one, we're trying to find a percent. So we've got to keep that in mind. We want to make sure that we change our answer to a percent when we're done. And because we're given two numbers, we want to make sure that we get the numbers in the right place. Because if we get them in the right place, we're going to get the answer right. So you'll notice on this one here, it says the new one is a percentage of the old one. Remember, we're always comparing to what it used to be, to the 100%, to what it, the value that it used to be and things like that. So the new one is some percent of the old one. So let's take a look at this. It used to be five inches. Now it's eight inches. So the new value is eight inches. The old value is five inches. And we're missing the percentage right there. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to write this down as 8 is equals some percent times 5. And then we're going to divide both sides by 5. So we're going to cancel those off. We're going to grab the calculator. Um, you may or may not need this. So I'm going to take 8. We're going to divide by 5. And we end up with 1.6. Well, if you've got 1.6 for P, so I'm going to write down P equals 1.6. Remember, this is a percent. P stands for percent. So we need to move this over one, two places, fill in with a zero. So the answer on this one is 160%. Now, I'm going to put a dotted circle around that because that is not the answer to the actual problem. That's just the answer to the equation. So remember, we're always comparing this to 100%. This is the old one. It represents 100%, but the new value is 160% of the old value. 8 is 160% of the old value, so this is 160% right here. So the question is, how much did it change? If it went from 100 to 160, it must have gone up 60%. So the old amount will always correspond to 100%, like we've shown right here. So we always take the new percent and we subtract 100. So we're going to take that new percent of 160% and we're going to subtract 100% and we end up with 60%. Now what you'll notice is we do 160 minus 100, it turns out to be positive. So the answer on this one is a 60% increase. 60% increase. And you can tell that it was an increase because it went up. So let's take a look at some notes here and then we'll do a few more problems. Now the new amount is always a percent of the old amount. The new amount is always a percent of the old amount, kind of like we had set up here. Um, and it kind of sounds like a markup or discount problem. Um, and we are always comparing the answers to 100%. So every single time we're going to compare the new answer to 100% of the old answer, or the old amount. And this means we're always going to have to do some sort of subtraction. 
somewhere we're going to have to do some subtraction in the problem in order to find the percentage of change. Okay, in this method with what we're going to do, we're going to actually do all the subtracting at the very end. And that's important because the sign of the percent after we subtract will confirm whether it's an increase or decrease. Remember, if it's positive, that's going to be an increase. And if it's negative, that's going to be a decrease. And you can kind of see a theme of that, of that type of indication, positive, negative, increase, decrease, uh, throughout a lot of the math that you're going to study. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see what we can do. It says find out, out how much the percentage changes from 100% and state whether it's an increase or decrease, and again, round appropriately. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, let's see, it changed from 45 quarts to 8 quarts. So it changed from 45 quarts to 8 quarts. So this is the old amount and 8 quarts is the new, whoops, the new amount. So that new amount is a lot less than the old amount. So this is going to be a decrease and let's, let's make sure the numbers work out that way. So the new one, 8, is some percent of the old amount, whoops, and that old amount is 45. So I'm going to write 8 equals some percentage of 45. We're going to do the multiplication there. And again, because we're finding the percent, we don't have to worry about decimals yet. So we're going to divide both sides by 45. So we're going to grab the calculator. I'm going to slide it over here just for the time being. So we can do this problem right here. Clear this off. I'm going to do 8 divided by 45. And we end up with 0.1777 just continues going on. Now, there are a couple things that we could do here. We could write down 0.177 and so forth and then change it to a percent. But if you just take your calculator and hit times by 100, that will move the decimal over two places. So it's 17.777%. Now, we want to round to the nearest hundredth, so it's either going to be 77 or one more than that, 78. And that's seven right there in that third decimal place. That's enough to bump it up to 78. So this is 17.78. So 17.78%. Okay, now that's the new percentage. That's how much is left. So we're always comparing with the old percentage, which is 100. So I'm going to grab the calculator again. And we're going to take 17.78%. Or 17.78. And we're going to subtract 100. And we end up with negative 82.22. So this is negative 82.22. Now, this right here, you'll notice that it's negative. So that indicates that it's a decrease. So we're going to write 82.22%. And off to the side, we're going to write that that is a decrease. Now, if you wanted to abbreviate and just write DEC with a period, that would be OK. One thing I want to warn you of is what you don't want to do is you don't want to say that we had a negative 82.22% decrease. Because the negative means decrease, and decrease means negative. So we're just going to say this is the amount of decrease. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. It changed from 457 to 1,000. So this is the old one, and this is the new one. So the new one, 1,000, is some percent of the old one, 457. So we're going to do 1,000 equals some percent of 457. These are going to be interesting numbers. Glad we've got a calculator here. Whoops, 457, those are going to cancel. So we get P equals. We'll grab that calculator, slide it over just a little bit so we can see what's going on. Clear this off. We'll do 1,000 divided by 457. Let's see what we get. Okay, so we get uh, 2.188 and so forth. Again, I kind of like uh, to be able to see this. I like multiplying that by 100. Let's move the decimal over there. Now, if you don't have to do that, if you can kind of visualize what's going on, that's totally okay. So this is going to be 218% and a little bit more. So it's 218.818. So it's either going to be 81 or 82. And we look at this uh, digit right here, that third decimal place. That's enough to bump that up to 82. So um, let me just go ahead and write this down, what we had before. So 2.18818. We moved it over two places. So we've got 218.818. That digit right there is enough to bump that up. So we end up with 218.82%. But remember, it didn't go up 218% because we have to subtract off that original amount that we already had. So we're going to subtract 100 and we get 118.82%. And notice that this is positive. We went way up. It's an increase. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this and write INC here. 
and we've got a 118.82% increase. Okay, last one, let's take a look at this one. It went from, uh, let's see, 25 disks down to 22 disks. So the new one is smaller than the old one. This is gonna be a decrease. Let's make sure we get this. The new one, 22, is a percent of the old one. So some percent of the old one, 25. So if you can skip right to here, that would be totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and divide by 25. So on this one, we get P equals, we'll grab the calculator, 22 divided by 25. And before I hit enter, you might be good at doing something like this. Uh, th see if you can guess what the answer is. 0.88, move that decimal over two places, so this is 88%. So remember, this is the new percent, but it used to be 100%, so we wanna figure out how much it changed. You might know exactly what it is already, so we're going to do, whoops, we're gonna do 88 percent minus 100 percent and we end up with minus 12 so this is negative 12 percent so we're going to say that this is a 12 percent decrease again we knew because it went down it was a decrease just like on part b we knew that it was an increase because it went up but it kind of bears out in the numbers notice that we end up with a positive answer here so it's an increase a negative answer here so it's a decrease again please don't put negative 12 percent decrease decrease takes care of the negative so go ahead and circle how you feel about this right now and good luck on the assignment.